Hello, hello, hello everyone, and welcome back to this week's episode of Mind of Mandy. We are going to be talking this week about my fluting, flute obsession, just flute in general. So let's go ahead and start off with how I got into playing the flute. So as I described, talked about before, uh, I started playing piano at age 10, started flute at, or er, piano at age seven, flute at age 10. How did that happen? Well, it, the, the piano wasn't enough for me and I was so obsessed with music overall that my grandpa decided, hey, let's see how she does with this other instrument. And my aunt's sister had a flute and she was selling it and my grandpa bought it for me. And he also bought a beginner book. And I literally just took the book and used it to learn how to play the flute. And I think 10, that would have been fifth grade. Okay. I was in fifth grade at that point and I loved it. Like it was so much fun. It was challenging and what I could do, cause I had to practice. My grandparents wanted me to practice so long every day. When I, we introduced the flute, it didn't matter if I was doing the piano or the flute. I just had to practice for that hour. So what I would do my poor little ADHD brain, not having the medication that it needed. I would practice piano for a little bit and switch to flute, piano, flute, piano, flute, and just switch back and forth until my time was up, which actually propelled me quicker in both areas because I wouldn't get, if I got frustrated with something instead of hyper-focusing on it to the point where no matter what I did, it wasn't good enough, I could switch and work on something else for a little bit and then come back. And that especially on the piano, that part that I was having issues with all of a sudden wasn't so bad. And as I progressed, it switched back and forth. So, you know, that was fifth grade, sixth grade is when the school I went to at the time started their beginner band. Needless to say, I had a head start on everyone because I was already playing. My flute was not a great flute, but it was a flute. And so all the way through junior high, not all the way through junior high, in sixth and seventh grade, I was first chair. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend I wasn't the typical flute diva because, well, I was. If I didn't have first chair, I didn't want to play. But I did a lot of things. Like I did all, I did junior high all state in sixth grade, which wasn't normal, but because I had been playing, the band director allowed me. I placed in sixth grade, I placed in seventh grade, I placed in eighth grade, but not on the flute. Um, in eighth grade, I switched to bassoon. Um, yeah, I switched, <laughs> but I continued playing the flute, even though I was learning a new instrument. And then it beginning my sophomore year, switched schools and this school had a marching band. Well, you don't march with the bassoon. Sorry, you don't do it. So for marching band, I played the flute. And for some reason, my flute did not like the heat. It did not like the Iowa summers, the heat, the humidity, no matter what I did, that damn thing would not stay in tune. Marching band was very difficult for me because of the music memorization. I've always struggled with that. And now as an adult, I understand that's because of my ADHD and the fact that my family decided not to have me medicated. I could, I had, I struggled. I really did. I struggled badly memorizing the music for marching band. And you add that onto the fact that no matter what we did, my flute would not play in tune. So I was usually like second chair, third chair, uh, third part, not chair. Like I was towards the back of the flute section because going from the small school to the much bigger school, 
uh, there were people there who they practiced a lot more than I did. They sounded better than I did. It is what it is. But at that time, I did not understand. I thought, well, that means I'm bad. I understand now that natural talent will only get you so far. But if you have a passion for something, you'll put the effort in. And going back to having a shitty childhood, I was not, after we moved, I was not allowed to pursue those things I was passionate about. So the practicing the instruments went to shit my sophomore, junior, and senior year. I still try to keep up with piano, but flute just and bassoon kind of fell to the wayside. Got to the point where I was so depressed that I literally became ineligible, so I couldn't even be in band my senior year, which broke my heart. And after high school, I moved out of my parents' house, and the guy I was dating at the time, he didn't like the flutes, so I didn't get to play the flute. And so I gave up on, on flute for many, many years. Um, probably from 2000 until 2017. So we're talking 17 years. Yeah, 17 years where I didn't play. And I got through a really rough tax season. I bought myself a cheap ass. 2016 is actually, no, it was 16 years. I'm sorry. Um, in 2016, got through a really, really rough, gnarly tax season. And as a treat to myself, I, for working super hard during a tax season, I was allowed to buy a $90 Amazon flute. A cheap ass Amazon flute. But I love that flute. And I got back into playing and it felt right. It's like all of a sudden everything in my soul was happy. Everything was good. And fast forward to 2000, you know, I practiced here and there. It wasn't super serious because it was annoying. Fast forward to 2017, at this point, my grandma, she was very sick and I, I used the flute to help me deal. So while I spent time, I was up at my grandparents' house helping with, take care of my grandma as she was, uh, fighting the cancer that took her life. Um, I found solace in playing the flute. Because I could go upstairs in my grandparents' house and sequester myself away from everyone and everything and just play. And play those things that spoke to me because I was not dealing with people telling me what to do, what I had to work on. I could just do it. At that point, I'm just like, I need a flute teacher. And that is when I started taking lessons from Joanna So, who is on YouTube as just another flutist. She's amazing. Um, anybody who is has at least a year playing, she's an amazing teacher. She really is. I cannot say enough about her. And she helped me progress very rapidly through going back through the beginner stage and the intermediate immediate stage and it got to the point where I literally was out playing this cheap ass $90 purple flute. Yes, it was purple. I love purple. And I couldn't buy a better flute from a store. So I went to eBay and I found this open hole B foot. And we'll get to what a B foot is here in a moment. And it was $125. I'm like, okay. So I bought it and I made sure the pads were good. And I love the, I love that flute. Like she was a good flute. She really was such a good flute for $125. And over time I had to do a couple of repairs here and there, a couple of pads replaced, but I sent her, um, through everything I do, I became friends with, um, a flute technician by the name of Adam Petri, who now is the proud owner and creator of Petri Piccolos, which are amazing. 
definitely, if you want a high-end professional piccolo, get on his wait list. Because there is a wait list. But they are amazing. He hand makes every one of them. Anyway, so I sent my flute, my pride and joy to Adam. And he messages me. He goes, where'd you buy the flute? And I told him. I told him the story. He's like, well, you have a Franken flute. I'm like, I have a what? So it was a Selmer body, a Bundy head, and a Meinhardt flute, uh, foot. I had three different flute parts from three different manufacturers all put together, and it somehow worked. Um, yeah, I, her name her name changed Franken flute at that point because that was just so. She was hobbled together and she worked, kind of like me. I'm hobbled together and I work, and I played on her and for several years. I won't even say several, five years or so. Um, at that point, Adam helped me get a better flute. Um, now she's the the new flute. She's a good flute, but I just struggled getting attached to her. I think it had to do more with what was going on in my life than her as a flute. Um, she's currently with him, um, with not him, but with a technician getting fixed. Brain fart. Anyway, um, so I had this Franken flute and I played on her. And during that time when I was helping with grandma, it got to the point where I would do two weeks on and my dad would come in and do another two weeks and we just kind of rotated that so that way we both got to go home and no it was a week on week off week on week off um so i'd be able to go home for a week he was there and then i would come take care help and he'd go home and at that point i joined um a community band he here in the town i live in now i love that band um and it ended up there's a bunch of flutes as you usually get with community bands and so i at first was um in second part second flute i didn't care at that point because at that point i'd lost the whole idea of flute diva um and i worked my way up to first flute and i started picking up the piccolo and i, I love the piccolo um and there i met uh somebody who played tuba who invited me to go play with the community band in the town that he lived in um sorry uh he passed away in a freak accident it's, it's a little emotional at times um anyway so it was uh the band he played in was a community uh band that was a fundraising organization for the local high school um the high school that that community, that high school, it's in a poor area here in the state I live in. And so I just like, yeah, I'll go play. You know, I had um, the one up here on Monday nights and then they were on Tuesday nights and I just got to go play. That's all I wanted to do was go play. Um, so I continued playing. And as I went through the separation from my ex-husband, the divorce, all that. It, once again, the flute is what helped me through all those rough emotions. I could play it out. And I still what, wasn't really allowed to buy a really, really good flute. But I was happy with what I had. I had no need, no desire to try to get something better because I'm like, who am I? I suck anyway. You know, going through just everyone has those moments. So moved to Houston. Um, you know, everything during COVID was shut down. There's no community bands. The job I had, I was extremely depressed. So I just didn't really play for about a year and a half and moved back to where we're at now and i started playing again and i went back to the um 
one community band. Uh, the one community band kind of dis, just, uh, that was weird. The one community band just kind of dissipated, but the one, uh, no, the community, the, uh, fundraising group, they're still going. And I went back and started playing with them again. And I felt at home. I'm playing. That's who I am at the cores. I'm a performer. It is what it is. I love it. Fast forward to this year, earlier this year, I go to a flute convention here in the state and I got to play a Trevor James flute. I got to play the Trevor James copper alloy flute. I fell in love. There is no way other around it. I fell in love with that flute. The, it's an amazing flute. First of all, she looks expensive. She looks bougie because she's copper. So a lot of people think when I break her out, oh my God, you have a gold flute. No, bitch. I ain't got that kind of money. I ain't that bougie. <laughs> she copper. She copper. But when I play, I play with a really deep, rich, dark sound, naturally. And from what I understand is that is a sound a lot of flute players have a difficult time playing, and that's how I play naturally. I have a difficult playing time playing the lighter, brighter, typical flute-sounding sounds. And my Trevor James, I have no problems. No problems whatsoever playing those kind of sounds. So now I can play a much wider range of sounds. And it's like, damn, maybe I am a halfway decent <laughs> flutist. <laughs> Seriously, that's what went through my head. But the same day I bought that, um, I was up at a shop about an hour and a half north of here. And they had this William Haynes Amadeus alto flute. I had not tried an alto flute. I'm like, it's going to take too much air. But that day I'm just like, yeah, fuck it. I'm going to try this. Oh, I fell in love. And I bought the alto flute. Like, I walked out of the store that day with the alto flute. I also ordered, while I was there, the Trevor James flute that I wanted. So I paid for two flutes. <sighs> Do I regret my decision? Absolutely not. Now, I do want to try the Trevor James Copper Alloy Alto Flute because the Copper Alto Flute I have, she is so much lighter than any other flute I've ever played. So with my fibromyalgia, it's easier for me to play her for extended periods of time without my shoulder hurting. And that is so amazing. Um. I have had to make a few adjustments to my C flute. Um, on the left hand, which is on the flute, the hand that's closest to the head, I had to add something for the index finger to raise it up because with my fibro, playing it the way it naturally is, the way the flute is made, hurt. So I... <laughs> Mandy mandied it, okay? Mandy mandied this. And what I did is I took a moving pad and I cut it to the size of that key and then I um, stick it, sticked it, took a little sticky pad and, and stuck it onto my flute. So now it's nice and thick and it, I can play more comfortably. For my right hand, the flute itself is too thin to, for me to hold it without something on there. So I took... It's supposed to actually be for the right hand to help with pain where the index finger, the, the palm on the index finger, that joint right there. And for those of you who are watching the video, it's right here um, to help kind of cushion that area. Except what I did is I took a hot glue gun and just layered, layer after layer until I got it nice and thick to the, where I wanted it. So that way the flute's thicker and it's easier for me to play. I made adjustments to my flute to make it easier to play. 
and I can practice my C flute for hours with no problem because of these adjustments. Now, when I break out the alto flute, it's limited amount of time because that thing is heavier. It is bigger. It is so much bigger. But the sound, if y'all haven't heard an alto flute, you need to get on to Google or not Google, but YouTube and YouTube that shit. It is so beautiful. Um, so Herman Beef Tink, who is one of my, who I, okay, not one of my, he is my favorite modern composer for the flute. And he has a lot of songs on there that have the alto flute where you can hear it. A lot of times the alto flute gets lost in the sound, but you can hear the alto flute. It is so, so beautiful. I love the alto flute. Um, I thought I was going to end up being that piccolo specialist, but I don't know anymore because the alto flute, oh, and someday I will own a bass flute, but I do own a piccolo. So let's talk about my little piccolo. Once again, she's an eBay special. She is a Jupiter metal basic line, basic, she's just very basic piccolo, metal piccolo. She, she works. She's a workhorse. She is a peen workhorse. I have tried, um, a couple of different other piccolos. I just haven't liked them. The only piccolo I have played that I've tried that I've liked more than the piccolo I have is Petri Piccolo. Which is why earlier I said you've got to try them if you're a piccolo player. Like, oh, I will own one someday. Hopefully sooner than later. Um, I also still would love to try a Trevor James piccolo. Um, they have a Mopin Wood one. Uh, it never hurts to have a backup. A good backup. I, as I said, I, I love flutes. I'll probably have two or three of every flute by the time I'm said and done. Um. So earlier I talked about a B foot on the C flute, which C flute is what us flutists call like the regular flute, the flute y'all think of. So a normal flute that people are used to seeing is what is called the C foot, hence C flute. Um, it has two keys on the foot joint, which is the very end, the far end away from the head. That's the foot joint. And if it's got two keys there, it's a C foot. Mine that I have, and I had it before the current flute, I have a B foot, which means that um, the C foot flute for my fellow musicians means that the lowest note that a flute can play is middle C. Now with my B foot, I can go to the B below that, which may not seem like a lot, but it does change. I think personally, it changes the sound of the flute. Um, so I have a B foot. I love my B foot because a lot of music, especially modern music, they're using B foot. They're writing that in. They, I have seen a G foot. So is it G one? So you have the C, the B, B flat, A. No, it's A. I'm sorry. It's five. It's got the foot joint has five keys on it. That would be an A because each one is a half key lower. I haven't tried it, but I have seen it. Um, other little fun things I have, I've done to flutes. I had a resonator head joint, not head joint, um, cork replacement in Franken flute. Now I gave Franken flute to a student who had outgrown her stu student, fl student flute, the resonator and all. That resonator was three hundred sixty dollars. I paid more for a part that goes into the flute than I did the flute itself, and for me that did help the sound. But I've gone back to cork. Now I play with the uh, Lafreak. Lafreak. I don't know what it's called, but it's um, the one I have is brass plated silver, and I just put it on my flute. And what it does is it's a sound bridge. So how it's how they'd say it works is it connects the sound from the head joint to the body better. There are people I've heard who say they don't notice the difference. For me, I noticed a huge difference, a huge difference in the sound of my flute. 
I also noticed that I can play the third octave on my flute a lot easier, crisper, clearer, less straining. For me, I got um, I got that from uh, Flutistry of Boston. They have amazing customer service. Like I cannot express how wonderful of a time I had because I actually got to go up to Flutistry of Boston uh, back in May. And the gentleman that was working that day not only showed me and my escort, who is a dear friend of mine, um, around, like through the whole building, he showed me some really nice flutes. Now, I wasn't going to touch and play them, but I got to see some really pretty flutes. I got to see their music. He actually showed me the technician area. It was amazing. And then he actually sent me home with three different Lafrakes to try on my flute and then send back what I didn't like. And I could have sent back all three of them, but I, I found one I liked because I tried the solid silver, the red brass, and then the brass coated silver, solid silver. Um, I love the way it sounds, but that's the great thing about flutes is what works for one person may not work for someone else, and that's been okay. Like, I have seen in other community instrument communities that they there there's oh you use that well you must not be good no you don't oddly enough we may be a little bit diva ish at times as flutists let's be honest we can be that way but we are one thousand percent supportive of all other flutists we love flutists. Flutists love flutists, like, because let's be honest, I want to say this, the flute is an easy instrument to learn and difficult as fuck to master. I don't think anyone ever fully masters the flute. The flute masters you. <laughs> um, as uh, my former flute instructor, Joanna, would say, just like in Harry Potter, where the wand chooses the wizard, the flute chooses the flutist. And I got chosen by Trevor James, Copper Alloy Flute. I love it. Um, I love the flute. Like, um, I love when I'm playing the flute, I can do the high register, don't get me wrong, but that is not my favorite sound on the flute. I like the deeper, lower, richer sounds. I think they're very pretty. That's a personal thing. Now, when I'm playing in whatever, like most flute music is written high because that's what we are. Like if you are not in an orchestra, you're in a community band, you're basically the violin. That's a lot of the time is we, we play either backup. We're, we very are very seldom center stage. Now, when it comes to flute, my goal is to someday get into an orchestra, like probably just a community orchestra, nothing professional, but I do want to play at a professional level without having gone to school for flute. And you know what that requires? A lot of practice, a lot of patience, a lot of technique, but I'm, I'm slowly working on it. Um, I try to practice a little bit every day. Uh, do I always get there? No. And do I beat myself up about it? Also, no. Um, in this room, like back here in this corner, back here, yeah, back this way, is my flute stand, the Hercules flute um, stand, which holds my, my C flute, my alto, and my piccolo. I get them all three out. Um, all my music, and I just practice. I practice my little heart out. But that is it. Today was all about flutes and my journey with flutes. Uh, we are right about the normal half hour limit. So I thank everyone for listening to me babble. I hope you come back next week. And if you are here and um, I'm going to ask this little question to see if you listened all the way to the end, because I hope you do. If you play an instrument, what instrument do you play? If you don't, 
play an instrument, what is your favorite instrument to listen to? Alrighty, everyone. I will see you next week. Toodles!